I deal with this? Use the Jigen Ryu Kendo technique. <laughs> what is the worst anime ever made? Now, some of you newer fans may scroll down to the lowest rated anime on my anime list and point out some shows that have gone down in infamy that have been clowned on by the entire anime community, like Mars of Destruction, or Scale to Heaven, or Seven Deadly Sins. <laughs> but go further back, and a handful of you may remember that years ago, one anime rose up the ranks to gain an almost legendary status, like the planets had aligned in all the wrong ways to create a stinker so bad, so foul. Christopher Nolan's about to make a three hour biopic on how bad this part. <laughs> Fuck, I say that. This was a car crash that derailed a train that smashed into a nuclear power plant that caused a fallout that could rival Chernobyl. This garnered the reputation of being the worst anime ever made. A show so bad it looped around to become a masterpiece. So in the current generation of Twitter people calling Demon Slayer mid or threatening to commit acts of violence over a single frame of dodgy looking CG in Attack on Titan, I thought it was time I experienced the show myself so we can all be reminded just how bad bad can be. This is the legend of Garzi's Wing. <laughs> Why did you make hot noodles on such a hot day? But before we get into this forgotten masterpiece of a stinker, a word from our sponsor, Reverse 1999. Reverse 1999 is a 20th century strategic RPG developed by Blue Pock Games, set to launch on mobile and PC platforms on October 26th. Pre-register now to get your free five-star character. In this game, you'll take a trip back to the 20th century. And if you didn't hear me before, the game launches globally October 26th. And by pre-registering, you get to start a countdown to the past and get a free five-star character that speaks in a cute French accent. The nature of divination is deduction based on reality. It's the last day of the year 1990. And the flow of time has started to become unstable in a world where natural born spellcasters exist called Arcanists. History starts flowing backwards during a catastrophic phenomenon known as the Storm. As the timekeeper named Vertin, it's your job to seek the truth about this storm and the mysterious circumstances surrounding it before the turn of the new millennium. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff? Sounds pretty epic, right? Well, Blue Pot Games have managed to give such a large story spanning centuries in a gorgeous little package. In order to make you feel like you're traveling through history, we get a blend of various retro art styles from pop art to classical oil paintings. But that only scratches the surface. That diverse presentation also carries over to the voice acting with a diverse cast of actors with British, Italian, French, and other accents. Pair these with an emotionally gripping story and what you're left with is a game that fills me with nothing but excitement. Did I mention you can summon a UFO that abducted a cow? So. What are you waiting for? Pre-register today to get your free Wi-Fi by clicking that link in the description and make sure you follow Reverse1999 on all their social channels while you're down there. Thank you very much to Reverse1999 for sponsoring us today. And with that said, back to Garzi's Wing. Here are your shoes, sir. Thank you. Garzi's Wing is a three-episode OVA from 1996. But to garner such a reputation like the worst anime ever made, the show must have done something pretty bad to leave such a deep impression on so many people. What atrocities lie in this anime? What sin must this show have committed to build such a stat- I can never escape, can I? The story follows our protagonist, a Japanese man going by the name of Chris, Chris, paving the way as the template for future isekai protagonists, a guy of indomitable strength and power, a true main character forgotten in the annuals of time, a man of true charisma and unmatched riz. Hey, Chris! Hi! You sure look good for someone preparing for an exam. You certainly got sexy. We join Chris as he's getting scolded by a female friend for some reason. But Chris has got no time for this because he's going home to attend his class reunion pool party. I will come back after I attend the class reunion pool party. But on his way home, his necklace starts Whoa. vibrating and has a strange reaction to a shrine before he is whisked away by a trans-dimensional space duck and... Wait, hold on a sec. Yeah, that's definitely a real sentence I just wrote down. But who is Chris? Why is this girl angry at him? Will he make it to the class reunion pool party? Why is there a trans-dimensional space duck? Does his helmet say anal? All questions the series has deemed irrelevant, as all this happens within the first 1 minute and 30 seconds of runtime. What? What is going on? Some may call this bad writing and pacing, but clearly Gazi's Wing was truly ahead of its time, wasting no screen time in isekai its protagonist, thrusting him headfirst into a fantasy world, naked, in a violent battle where a group of rebels are revolting against their kingdom, at war against... being slaves. Don't get killed! Too. Yes, this may be a forgotten show from 1996, but no matter what time period of history we're in, if there are three things that are certain in life, it's death,
taxes, and isekai anime having slavery. But hold on guys, because this time our protagonist is here to end slavery rather than partake in it. Because apparently he is meant to be a holy warrior, prophesized to turn the tides of war that the rebels immediately recognize. Oh my gosh, that skill! Is he the holy warrior? Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. That skill! See, even though he's just an ordinary guy, Chris tries to live up to become the holy warrior they say he is. He may have unwillingly be put into a war he knew nothing about, but seeing this group of truly oppressed people, used and abused slaves, having to fight for dear life every day just to survive while torn away from their friends, families, and loved ones, Chris, being the good guy that he is, quickly empathizes with the struggles they are going through. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please stop crying, huh? If you didn't fly out, I would still be in Kastanga Hill, playing with my friends and Grandma Moai. <laughs> I could also have attended my high school class reunion. <laughs> but like Batman and the Joker, Guts and Griffith, Good Food Takes and Me, every good protagonist needs an equally great antagonist. And luckily, Gazi's wing provides just that, with the threatening, the intimidating, the sinister, uh, 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 man. Batwoman! A general seen here making his epic Your entrance, working with the king to prevent the rebellion. <laughs> Did that horse just commit die? To prevent the rebellion and Chris from succeeding at all costs. And it's up to Chris to use his intelligence correctly, using his advanced knowledge from the modern world to outthink, outsmart his opponent, using the tools he has available in innovative ways to save the tribe from their fate thanks to his superior intellect. Stop it! Ah. It will blow up! Don't bother me! Oh, are you covering that in Gata powder? Why, yes, I'm trying to. Doesn't work. So hey, this looks like a simple isekai where a normal guy gets transported to another world, becomes some legendary hero, saves the world. I've seen this before, nothing new here. Wrong. Because the thing is, when the transdimensional space duck transported him over, it also left a copy of his real body in his original world. And thanks to his necklace having some kind of telepathic link. So waking up with an aching body and bruises everywhere, Chris has a hard job explaining to himself. I was bruised all over my body because I had to fight naked. <laughs> Exactly what kind of situation he's in right now. There is a war going on. Even dinosaurs are here. And they use bows and arrows. My sword is unbelievably dull. <laughs> Fucking Chris, man. You're gonna kill yourself and me. Many credit the popularization of the modern isekai genre to Sword Art Online with the gimmick of being stuck in a game where if, if you die, die in the game, game you die, die in real life. life. But now I can see that Gazi's wing was actually the true progenitor of this, as the characters themselves realize just how high the stakes are. But I think we are still one person. We die together? Probably. No, it can't be true! I'm, I'm not, not joking. joking. And the worst thing about this is, is that this is unironically an interesting concept. Having an alter ego stuck in both the fantasy world and the real world where they can communicate with each other is a concept I haven't seen any modern isekai tackle. Don't quote me on that, there's probably an isekai I'm forgetting. And since they both share damage and fatigue, that means the stakes are real. Real world Chris might not be fighting any battles, but he could still die at any time. Since the Chris in the real world is stuck on the sidelines, he has the opportunity to provide something even more valuable than man. I'm going to the class reunion at the community pool. I think it will be good for my present mental condition. <laughs> oh, he did it! The world is saved! He got to the pool party! Oh, we're in the end game now, lads! Remember, kids, if you're ever having trouble figuring out how to prioritize the right things in life, take a page out of Chris's book. From least to most important, we have eating, not dying, ending slavery, class reunion pool party. Are you in danger now? Chris! I have no choice but to see my friends. Now, I've been hearing some slanderous claims Garzi's that the English dub voice acting Garzi's is some Garzi's of the worst wing. that's ever Garzi's been heard. Wing. And Garzi's I take Garzi's this personally. Wing. What are Doman and the other people doing? They're the Suicide Squad! Sure, everyone may speak like they sound like they forgot they have caps lock on, word emphasis is all over the place, but are you telling me a bad dub can have voice actors that can deliver the line so perfectly every single time? A name so powerful it can invoke enough different emotions from our protagonist to rival any Oscar worthy performance. Confusion. Yamato Takeru no Mikoto. What? Desperation. Why can't you do something for us, Mr. Yamato Takeru no Mikoto? Despair. Ah! Damn you, Yamato Takeru no Mikoto! Ah! What is this legendary Yamato Takeru no Mikoto? Well, it's something relevant to the plot. I don't. 
I don't know, they never explain why I keep saying it. That makes sense! And honestly, how else is such Shakespearean level writing meant to be delivered? Like the line, He's just a human! <laughs> Humans are just human! Humans are just human. Could this be referring to mankind's struggle against themselves, that no matter how much we struggle or fight against it, there is no going against our own nature? Clearly, this line was so influential, it laid the foundation for the Shiro Emiya school of philosophy. It's what we call a drug in my world. If you taste it or smoke it, you get happy and do crazy things. <laughs> Bro, she definitely hits the blood. Look at her. She's ready to smoke a fat one right now! Not also forgetting that one very important aspect when it comes to anime is appeal. In order to be successful, you can increase your chances by appealing to as wide of an audience as you can no matter the age range. And Gazi's Wing did something truly revolutionary by speaking in a language that could be understood by toddlers who have yet to achieve object permanence. It is most effective to place a Duraga roll at Gabu Juju. Ishubara of Duraga roll! We are entering Gabu Juju! <laughs> Is that Gelgagaji? You may be looking at clips of this and thinking, Giga, this is an old anime. Why would I want to go back and watch something that looks so old? And, you know, I understand the sentiment. As the anime industry evolves, you get to see the average quality of animation improving. With new tools, new talent, in general, anime has never looked better. But even with all these developments, there are still many that argue that hand-drawn cell animation can look just as good. And after seeing Gazi's Wing, I'm inclined to agree. Sure, we may have our Demon Slayers or Chainsaw Mans now, but what I didn't realize is that action animation may have already peaked 30 years ago. <laughs> This is the bar modern animators have been chasing all along. Now you may be wondering what kind of person would be behind such a project. Perhaps some random nobody that never worked on anime again. Someone who had no knowledge of the industry. Close, because this was actually the brainchild of Yoshiyuki Tomino. The mastermind behind such other anime projects like Mobile Suit Gundam. <laughs> I must somehow make sense of our convoluted situation. Gazi's Wing is in short, a masterpiece of garbage. There may be anime that are worse looking, there may be anime that are technically lower rated, but no other show has quite come together in the completely wrong ways to result in such an entertainingly horrible product. We've had some horrible stinkers in the modern day, but time won't forget. The mythical adventures of Japanese man Chris and the legend that is Gazi's Wing. Whatever the hell Gazi's Wing was, I don't know if that was ever explained. What was that? Was that ever explained? What the fuck was half the plot of the show in the end? Who the hell is your mother talking to Nobi Gozo? Am I even saying that correctly? Was that ever explained? Garzi's wing? 